Thanks for joining me. In today's video, we're going to show you the workflow that I use in order to get the cleanest files from Lightroom when working with Fujifilm RAWs. We're going to show you how I convert the files into a DNG file, and then I'm going to share with you the settings that I use that give me the best results as far as Fujifilm files inside of Lightroom. So let's get started. The first thing you want to do is open up Lightroom and go to the image that you want to edit, select that image, and you want to go over to the detail section of the develop module here. So you can see under detail, make sure to turn your sharpening all the way down to zero, as well as the noise reduction. We want to turn that all the way down to zero. The next thing we'll do is we'll convert our .raf file into a .dng file. So in order to do that, let's go to the image that we want to convert. In Mac, you want to control click. On a Windows, you want to right click, and then you want to select enhance details. Once the Enhanced Details Preview window comes up, you can scroll around and you can see, and when you click and hold, you can see the difference that the Enhanced Details makes with and without it. When we click and hold in the Preview box, we can see that without Enhanced Details, it looks a little bit smudgy. We let go and we see a little bit more detail, so that's what we want to have in our converted file. So after you see that, go ahead and click Enhance. And once it's loaded, normally the Enhanced Details file will be to the left of the .raf file. So we can see here is our .raf file. And then if we go to the file right next to it, we now have our enhanced DNG file. So that's the file we want to work with. Right when we go to our enhanced DNG file, we'll notice that it's already been sharpened a little bit just by using that conversion. And then now I'll show you some of my recommended settings for the sharpening that'll get you the cleanest images without any noise. So the first thing you'll do is go back to the detail section of the develop module here go under sharpening and click that amount, turn that amount into 90. Now you can go up and down depending on what type of picture you're working on, but I found that 90 is a really good starting point. But again, you can go plus or minus depending on how much detail you need. And this is the big one here is you wanna keep the detail slider at zero. There is a little bit of leeway there, but the detail slider is actually the culprit for the Fujifilm worms. So we wanna keep that as low as possible, as much as we can to prevent any of those worms from coming in. And the last thing we'll adjust is the masking. So what the masking does is it keeps the sharpening only to areas that actually need sharpening and it cancels out sharpening from areas that don't actually need it. In my case, in this photograph, some of the shadow areas don't really need too much sharpening, as well as the sky doesn't really need too much sharpening. When you add sharpening to those areas that don't actually need it, all you're doing is adding noise to the image and it makes for less than a clean image. For this case, we'll change the masking to 30. Now, if you wanna see exactly where the mask is being applied, what you can do is hold down Option or Alt and drag and you can see as we do that while holding down the option key, when we drag up and down, we can see that the white areas are the actual areas that are being sharpened and the black areas are the areas that are not being sharpened. So we can see as our mask goes all the way up, only a very select few parts of the image are sharpened. If we go all the way down to zero, everything is sharpened. So you wanna find that balance point in your specific image that gets you to the amount that you need. For our image here, I'm gonna leave it right at about 30, and that looks good, so we'll leave it at that. Let's zoom in and let's see how that does. So if we turn the sharpening off and on, we can see with it off, and we can see with it on. It actually looks pretty good. It's gonna be a little bit difficult for you to see on YouTube here, but I can tell you that it's adding a good amount of sharpening without introducing any of that wormy artifact. Now that wormy artifact, I'll show you if you overdo it on the detail slider, I'm just gonna over exaggerate here so that you can see it. So just as an example, just because we converted our file from a .raf into a .dng, it doesn't mean that you're not gonna get wormy artifacts. You're still gonna get wormy artifacts if you go overboard, whether it's with a Fujifilm camera or any other camera. So you wanna make sure that you're very careful with your sharpening and you're extra careful with the detail slider. So look, as I scroll around, you can see those wormy artifacts there. I'll add a little bit of contrast just so you can see those a little bit more obviously there. So you can see in the sky here, there's a whole ton of wormy artifacts. Watch when I turn that sharpening off, that goes away there. 
So just as a heads up, you can go up and down with some of the settings that I shared with you today. Again, I found that the settings that I shared with you today are a good starting point to avoid some of those wormy artifacts. I think the biggest takeaways from this is you want to keep your detail slider to zero. And just remember, even if you're converting it into a cleaner .dng file, either with Lightroom Enhanced Details or the Iridian X Transformer, you can still get some of those wormy artifacts if you go overboard. So just make sure not to go overboard with your sharpening. Make sure you just add enough to get it just a little bit better looking than the original output straight out of camera. That's it for today's video, guys. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to comment below. Also, make sure to subscribe and click the notification bell for more photo tips, tricks, and camera gear reviews. Until next time, thanks for joining me and take care.